And hello everyone. Uh, we're back again looking in uh, Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 1. We're going to pick up where we left off at verse 15. Uh, fascinating uh, book of prophecy. Uh, uh, mind blowing. Um, I, you, we don't have an imagination big enough to to uh, uh, get this, but the Lord uh, wants us to have have somewhat of a look at it and see how it applies uh, not only uh, to uh, uh, Israel, the Gentiles, but I think in particular to the Christians today. Ezekiel again is is a is a difficult book, but it's, it doesn't mean it isn't one that should not be studied. Uh, so we're going to look at it now. Let's begin with all the help we can get by going to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we praise you. We give you thanks. We give you honor and glory, for thou art worthy. Uh, thou art the God of gods, uh, you are uh, the King of kings. We give you praise, uh, for we are your subjects, and we seek your pleasure. We seek your goodwill. We desire to learn, and in learning to, to be better Christians, to be better servants of thee, bless us now with your Holy Spirit. We ask it in the name of Jesus, and we say thank you. And thank you. And everybody said, right? Everybody said, amen. All right. Oh, uh, let me get myself ready here. All right. Chapter one, we're going to look at verses 15 through 21 uh, together because. Uh, uh, they go together, <laughs> and and uh, I think that that the natural break, uh, spiritual break too, would be after uh, verse twenty one. All right, fifteen through twenty one. It says, "Now as I looked at the living creatures, behold, a, a wheel was on the earth beside each living creature with its four faces." The appearance of the wheels and their workings was like the color of beryl, and all four had the same likeness. The appearance of their workings was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Um, I think we can all uh, we we can we can see that. Uh, when they moved, it says, they went toward one another of four directions. They did not turn aside when they went as for their rims. They were so high, they were awesome, and their rims were full of eyes all around the four of them. When the living creatures went, the wheels went beside them, and when the living creatures were lifted up, from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Uh, wherever the spirit wanted to go, they went, because there the spirit went, and the wheels were lifted together with them. For the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Uh, when those went, they went. Uh, when those stood, they stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up together with them. For the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I hope you can understand me. Uh, my voice uh, is shot. Uh, my, I normally don't have allergies, but... Uh, what there's something in the air uh, that that is just driving me crazy. All right, uh, let's look at these verses uh, uh, closer. I hope you can understand. It says a wheel was on the earth beside each living 
creature. It's e uh, it isn't easy to picture exactly what Ezekiel saw or described here. It probably uh, it's probably the idea of a grand uh, four wheeled chariot bringing the throne of God. Uh, we can visualize that. Use your head, your imagination. The general impression is of a constant activity and motion, always moving, uh, no, not only by the living creatures themselves, but also by the throne of God, uh, which is specifically mentioned in verse 26. Uh, the color, it says, of beryl. The mineral beryl can uh, come in many different colors, but one of the more notable and precious is the emerald. Uh, this may mean that the wheels and their workings gave off a green color. Uh, it's funny that that comes up. I just recently met a lady and her name is Beryl. Uh, biblical name. <laughs> All right. Um, it says a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Uh, each wheel is composed of two wheels, apparently at right angles to each other. This is impossible in normal reality, but in the vision, it enables the chariot to run instantly in any direction without turning all right it says when they moved uh, they went toward any one of four directions they did not turn aside uh, when they went the sense seems to be that the wheels and their workings could move in any direction but there was no sense of chaos or disorder in the movements. Uh, our text goes on and says, as for their rims, they were so high, they were awesome, and their rims were full of what? Eyes. Again, it isn't easy to picture exactly what Ezekiel saw or described here. The description of full of eyes was how John described the cherubim themselves. Uh, the sense is of great knowledge and intelligence, there, uh, some would say. Now, when the wheel of the, the living, it says when the living creatures went, the wheels went beside them. As the four cherubim moved, so did the four wheels and their workings. Uh, they were so closely connected uh, that Ezekiel could write, the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. That's where they, he gets that, I think. All right. Uh, you know, that, that whole group of scriptures, uh, uh, 15 through 21, uh, is something that you need to read uh, more than once and then you need to meditate on it. Just think about it. Just think about it. Okay? All right, next, verse 22 through uh, 25. Uh, there'll be look, we'll be looking above the firmament and the wings of the living creatures. Here's what it says. The likeness of the firmament above the heads of the living creatures was like the color of an awesome crystal stretched out over their heads and under the firmament, firmament uh, their wings spread out straight one toward another. Each one had uh, two which covered one side and each one had two which covered the other side of the body. Uh, when they went, uh, it says, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of many waters, like the voice of the Almighty, a tumult, uh, like the noise of an army. And they, st when they stood still, 
uh, they let down their wings. A voice came from above the firmament that was over their heads. Whenever they stood, they let down uh, their wings. All right. Ooh. Again, uh, just read this over and over, uh, and you'll get it. I promise you. All right. It says the likeness of the firmament. Uh, above the heads of the living creatures in the text we just read. As Ezekiel looked above the cherubim, he saw space like the color of an awesome uh, crystal. There was something spectacular about the sky above the cherubim. I think it was the glory of the Lord. What do you think? All right says i heard a voice of their wings like the noise of many waters like the voice of the almighty this seems to describe the loud and majestic noise of what a great waterfall john used this phrase to describe the voice of uh, the ascended jesus the voice of God and the voice of the great multitude. Whoa. It takes your breath away when you consider that. Think about that for a moment. It says a voice came from above the firmament. The living creatures responded to this voice that came from above all. Got to emphasize that. It came from above all. Verse 26 uh, through uh, 28 now, uh, uh, above all things, the throne and he who sat upon the throne. Uh, verse 26 through 28. And above the firmament over their heads was the likeness uh, of the throne uh, was a likeness with the appearance of a man on a on a man high above it. Also, from the appearance of his waist and upward, I saw, as it were, the color of amber with with the appearance of fire all around within it. Uh, and from the appearance of his waist and downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire. Uh, with the with brightness all around, like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. It continues and says, this was the appearance of the likeness, the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So when I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard a voice of one speaking. Whoa, that's a good place to stop. Above the firmament, over the heads, was the likeness of a throne, is what our text just says. Since the wheels and the working seemed to be on the earth beside each living creature, and the voice of the throne came from above the firmament, the presence of God was above the cherubim and the wheels and their workings. God was above it. it. says, in appearance like a sapphire stone. Now, we went from beryl uh, to sapphire. Uh, Moses describes parts of his heavenly vision with the blue color and brilliance of a sapphire stone isn't that something uh, exodus 24 uh, verse 10 all right continuing it says on the likeness of the throne was a likeness with the appearance of a man high above it the repetition of the word likeness means that ezekiel was concerned to emphasize that what he saw uh, were representations of the real. Uh, Ezekiel might very well deny that he saw the actual throne of God or God himself. He saw their likeness. I think of his, 
you know, it's a wonder that he lived through uh, seeing these things. All right. Uh, it goes on and it says a likeness with the appearance of a man. The representation Ezekiel saw of God was something uh, like a man. This is consistent with uh, the other descriptions of God in heavenly visions. And we can quote uh, many verses to support that. The, the general idea that God made man in his image should be something that uh, over, comes out to us. Again, Ezekiel did not say that God was a man. That, was, that would be totally false. Merely that his appearance was something like a man. You know, I mean, we all have uh, our own uh, individual um, thoughts as to what God would appear like, what he would look like. Uh, most people think of him as a, an, a very elderly man with a staff and the white hair and white beard and white robe and and he just muddles along. That is not the same God of the scripture, my friends. Our God is a mighty God. He is an active God. He is a fearsome God. He is a lovely God. Uh, you have to remember that. And the closer you get to him, the more I think you will see him. All right. It says uh, the uh, color of amber this is the fourth association of color first beryl emerald green then clear crystal then sapphire and now golden brown uh, amber i think is more more uh, uh yellow than it is anything else from the appearance the text says of his waist and downward i saw as it were the appearance of fire and with brightness all around. Uh, flashing red and yellow light came down from the representation of God. The suggestion is of his power and radiance going from heaven down to earth. Uh, like the appearance, it says, of a rainbow in a cloud, a rainy day, so is the appearance of the brightness all around. The whole picture is uh, of colorful, bright, happy radiance, uh, like a rainbow in, in, in a cloud. You want to bring a smile on some old grump's face, uh, take him outside when there's a rainbow in the sky. Uh, that that will change his tune real fast. I know. I've been out there and looked. <laughs> All right, it says this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. A likeness of it. Ezekiel, Ezekiel really carefully built up to this declaration revealing that the radiant being he described was in fact Yahweh, the God of Israel himself. Ezekiel did not claim to see God directly, but only the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Yahweh. You see, I think if he literally saw God, and let's say face to face, it'd kill him. Uh, God is, is uh, so miraculous. Uh, a mere mortal man cannot look upon the face of God without uh, having uh, extreme uh, difficulty at best. All right, it mentions glory, the term kabod derives from a root meaning to be uh, heavy, uh, but when applied to royalty and divinity, it denotes the sheer weight of that person's majesty, that quality which evokes a response of awe. 
in, in the observer. He says, I fell on my face and I heard a voice, a, a voice of one speaking. Ezekiel's response was to humble surrender before such a God of glory. God's presence was to reveal himself through his word. That was God's response. Uh, and we have the pleasure of that today. One might think that the mere revelation of God and a vision was enough, but it was not enough for God. Uh, something in his nature demands that he reveal himself through his word, making this vision uh, valuable not only to Ezekiel, the prophet, but for all who will read and consider his word. Now, that concludes chapter one and i'll tell you what friends we've covered a, a remarkable space in in two weeks of study uh, just by getting through chapter one that does not uh mean uh that it it doesn't deserve uh further uh, uh study you need to study it some more. You need to read it uh, very much more. Now, some people are going to run out and look at their their uh, common uh, what do you call that uh, commentaries. Now, there's nothing wrong with with some commentaries. There's something dreadful wrong with most of them. Uh, but you've got to remember. That's just what it is, is a personal opinion of somebody else and their comments. When you pray before you read and study the word of God, the Holy Spirit is the overriding factor in his leading, in his eyes, and his understanding. Uh, uh, begins to come within you you pray for his help and he will help you you know you're not going to get it all uh especially the first reading or the first study or the first meditation on it uh but you're going to get some you know and i'd rather have some than none that's the truth uh i've got all of jesus by grace through faith. But uh, the rest of it, it you know, he gives us uh, kind of like piecemeal that, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's too much for us to, to, uh, to grasp. Uh, nevertheless, he had reason to uh, develop it this way and reveal it this way. And therefore we need to heed it and, and think about it, and pray about it, and read it, uh, not just at one setting, okay? Uh, I think I've said enough on that. Ezekiel 2, uh, beginning at verse 1, we'll read 1 and 2, where it's the calling of the prophet. Uh, he said to me, beginning at uh, verse 1 of chapter 2, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. Then the Spirit uh, entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I said to me, there was no... Uh, the, uh, there were no chapter divisions in the original writing of Ezekiel, so we should not miss the fact that Ezekiel's call to prophetic work came from the overwhelming vision of God, his chariot, his throne, and the cherubim that are described in chapter 1. He says, Son of man, this is the first of 93 times, 93 times God used this phrase 
to address Ezekiel. It is a title that emphasizes that he is a man among men and uh, something of a representative uh, of humanity. What a privilege that would be, amen? It says, stand on your feet. Uh, Ezekiel 1.28 uh, tells us that the prophet fell on his face at the sight of the likeness of the glory of the Lord in the vision of Ezekiel 1. Now, he's told to stand, to hear God's message, and to receive his call. You know, there are a lot of people that you know, proclaim to be God's messengers, but they never had the call. Uh, I'll enough said about that. The Spirit entered me, the text said, when, I, when he spoke to me. For Ezekiel, God's word became the way of the Holy Spirit the way the Holy Spirit entered and worked in him. Uh, the Holy Spirit still works and enters his people through the word of God. And that is a fact. Thank you, thank you, Lord. He set me on my feet, uh, the text says. Ezekiel could not stand before the glory of the Lord, but, when, but was then commanded to stand. As he heard the word of God's command, the Spirit entered him and worked in him to do what God commanded. Uh, this same pattern of work of the Spirit and God's word is evident in believers today. Same thing. You know, you got to get up. You got to stand. And by, I might just add to that, step out in faith after you've received. All right, we're going to stop there. Uh, we'll come back at chapter 2, uh, verse 3 next week, uh, where we'll see the call speaking to the rebellious house of Israel. You know, sometimes you're called to do things that you don't want to do. I've had sermons where I was called to uh, preach and I didn't want to preach them. i just be honest with you. Uh, but uh, you have to be obedient and let the, what's the old saying, let the chips fall away where they may. Well, I'm not worried about that uh, because if you stand on the word in the hand of God, uh, his word will not return void. All right, let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we thank you and we give you praise for the visions that we've been able to see in the ministry of Ezekiel. And we praise you, dear Lord, that you reveal to us sights and things that we've never seen before and others outside of the faith especially don't know anything about. Help us, dear Lord, to continue in our study and to look further uh, that your word might be uh, manifest through us to bring glory and honor to your name. We ask it in the name and the precious name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. God bless you all.